Ladies and gentlemen, can, let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me all right? Is that okay? Okay. How about now? Perfect. Thank you, Rick. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Vance Smith. I'm chairman of the House Transportation Committee. Uh, I see that we have enough members present to have a quorum, and I do appreciate all our members coming. We've had a hard time scheduling a transportation committee meeting. It seems like the first time we thought about it on Wednesday at 3, uh, the governor decided he needed to deliver his state of the state, and we were glad to give him that slot. And then today we almost were taken up by the Chief Justice, and she did a great job, and we still had time to have our meeting. So we're glad to be here, and we're glad all of you are here in the audience. And as you know, we're now live on the Internet, which is good. People back home can see all of you in action, and we're, we're happy to do that. So what we'll do, just a few ground rules. Uh, the members, of course, all have a, a button that they can push, and it'll give us a number, and we'll turn your mic on. And the people that will address the committee can come to the podium, and we'll have your mic going, and, and we appreciate your comments. Um, to start out with, Ms. Linda Nations, uh, she's the secretary for the Transportation Committee. She's in room 218 of the Capitol. Most of, most of you are familiar with that, and we're glad to have her here with us today. And Ms. Abby Richardson is here also. Uh, she will keep us straight as far as information coming out to us and, and keeping the right microphone on. And Jennifer is probably having some copies run off of the agenda for you members, and she'll be back in just a minute. So we're glad to have Jennifer as an aide to us today. I appreciate the members being here. We sent out, uh, Linda sent out to each member a copy of the House rules. And last session, we adopted those rules. But what we did, we sent those out again just so that every member could have a chance to peruse those and see if there might be any suggestions or changes that you have. Oh, I'd like to stop right here, too, and I'm looking. We have two new members on transportation this year, y'all. And unfortunately, uh, we lost a member during the interim, a representative Henry Howard, and who's no longer with us and had, had been a representative for a long time and done a great job. Uh, actually, he was chairman of Human Relations and Aging back when I served on that committee for 12 years, and so we really regret the passing of Representative Henry Howard. Um, Representative Quincy Murphy is a new member of this committee, and there's some conflicting meetings going on right at this time, so if you don't see those members here or other members, that's where they are. Uh, Representative Quincy Murphy, we're glad to have him here, and he's going to serve on the State Highways and Beautification Committee, and also Representative Melvin Elverson is going to be with us as a transportation member, and he will serve and has already started working on the resolutions committee. So we're glad to have those two, two members with us. At this time, I would open the floor to the members and ask, does anybody have any suggestions or comments about the rules? We don't officially need to readopt those. I'm just making sure that everybody knows what the rules for the transportation committee are. And if you don't have any comments, We'll move right along. Also in uh, your packet, and most of you know this, we have rules for, for road namings and bridge namings and uh, general information about such. So, and I know a number of you have used those rules and applied to, uh, to name certain bridges and roads and highways, and that seems to be going fairly well. And in that respect, I'd like to say thanks to uh, Deputy Commissioner Larry Dent, who usually handles all the letters that come back to the members and states whether or not there's a conflict or no conflict. So thank you. At this time, uh, I know that we've had a subcommittee meeting. Any questions? That's the rule. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, at this time, we've had a, we've had a uh, subcommittee meeting of the Resolutions Committee, and at this time, we have House Resolution 1041 that's in your packet, and I would ask the Vice Chairman of the Resolutions Committee, Representative John Burns, and what's your number, John? 
Thank you, uh, Representative Burns. There's been a motion made by the Vice Chairman of the Resolutions Committee that these bills do pass. Do I hear a second? Is there any discussion? All in favor will say aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Representative Burns. Also, uh, on your agenda, I made an error yesterday, SB 231. Uh, we won't be taking that bill up. SB 231 had a companion bill in the House that dealt with design build, D-U-I-L-D. It was a design build bill is what it was. So uh, that bill has already been taken care of last year and went through the Senate and was signed by the governor. So you can actually strike SB 231. Representative Lunsford. See here? I'd like to recognize, recognize Representative Lunsford for a discussion on HB 1033. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Mr. Chairman, it appears that we've opened quite a hornet's nest, which always makes me wonder why. You see, House Bill 1033 is a very simple bill. It's actually less than one page. It actually is less than a half a page of type. HB 1033 is really not about a commuter rail, so much is it about rights and justice, and let me explain to this committee what I mean by that. You know, our Constitution currently allows for fee simple ownership of private property in Georgia, and that's really what this bill is all about. You see, our Constitution allows local governments to pledge your tax based revenue based on your fee simple ownership of the property to pass bonds for construction, infrastructure, etc. Our Constitution also allows school boards to pass school bonds for also their use as well. You know, our Constitution also allows special option, special purpose local option sales tax for three different purposes. However, our Constitution clearly states, and I do mean clearly states, that these taxes are to be ratified by the voters, not by an appointed or hired board. Our Constitution also imposes debt restrictions, which cannot be imposed on a hired or appointed board. I'm amazed and disappointed, Mr. Chairman, that all these elected officials from ARC, GMA, and ACCG are opposed to allowing the voters of Georgia to decide whether they want to pledge their private property rights and their personal property to incur debt. I'm also disappointed that they're scared to let the voters vote on an issue. I think that they do have a say in how their money is spent and how much debt is incurred. I feel that we're setting a very dangerous precedent whereby an appointed or hired board member has the position and authority to impose taxes in a jurisdiction outside where they reside. They're imposing taxes and levying fees in a county or jurisdiction or municipality outside their region. And these same elected officials are opposed to allowing the voters decide to where to spend their voters' money. I feel that our state owes itself a little bit of time on this issue, Mr. Chairman. And what I would like to do is that we work very slowly and judiciously on this issue and would like to request that you place this bill in a study committee or subcommittee for further examination from this committee and to do nothing moving it forward today until we can examine the issue a little further, Mr. Chairman. 
Okay, thank you, Representative Lunsford. Uh, members of the committee, any, any comments from members of the committee about the bill or about the suggestion by Representative Lunsford to place this in a study committee? Do I have any comments from anybody from the audience that would like to come to the podium and state your name and who you're with and any comments you'd like to make at this time? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman and members of this great body, we in Clayton County, as is demonstrated by the number of our good citizens that are here, have elected officials, representatives to be the stewards of our county. And if this matter goes forward, let's put buses, let's put roads, Let's put all of the debted expenditures before the public. Absent that, I'm grateful and for uh, the gentleman's suggestion that we put it in a study committee to study it further. But please note that, that, that we want the train. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bell, for your comments. Anybody else? Do I hear a, Representative, you want to say something? May I? Yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, sir. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I am an elected official from, the, from Clayton County. And I do want to say that most of the people that I've spoken with we do need an alternative method of transporting the people. Just try to travel down 75 south or north in the mornings or in the afternoon, or Georgia 85. My wife and I and my children, during certain times of the day, 1941, almost unusable because of the amount of traffic. And just the other day, an individual was killed during the time that's most dangerous. Now, the fact, I believe the paper, the local paper called that particular highway a very dangerous highway. We do have problems. But Mr. Chairman, the way that this commuter rail will be financed, I don't think should be placed on the back, solely on the backs of the people that I represent. Clayton County shouldn't be responsible. It should be a metro, a state type of program that will ensure safety for all the citizens, not just in my territory, because people travel through all the states at all times. I have no problems with the study committee. I think that's a good idea. We're all for the rail, but we need to make an adjustment on how the rail will be found, and not solely on the backs of my constituents. And I cannot allow myself to pass a bill that will place a burden not just on me, but on the backs of, of my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren. I just don't think it's fair. But we do need an alternative method, but not the way that it's, that it's, it's, it's set at this time. Thank you, Representative Jerry. Uh, anybody else on the committee have a comment? All right. Does anybody have a mo let, let me say this. Oh, we got some there. Okay.
put this in a study committee, what are we going to study? The study committee over the interim, or are we going to do it while we're in session? I say we do it while we're in session. May I address the author of the bill? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Just reading the bill, and I was written right now. What effect could this have on the existing rails that are already running? Little to none, actually. What we were concerned with, the, the co-sponsors on this legislation as well as myself, is that we're setting a little bit of a dangerous precedent. What we are creating is another unfunded state mandate. We're going to a local government and saying, by the way, we're putting you a commuter rail here. This is who's going to own it. Here's the leases. Here's the agreements. Here's everything. And by the way, here's your bill. You have no say-so or no voice at the table. We're not opposed to the commuter rail. And I think the people that are in this room that feel that I'm opposed to the commuter rail are all wet. That's not the case. I'm opposed to the method of payment. Of the commuter rail. Your concern is mainly the local share that you would have to pay? And yes, sir, I am. I'm concerned with the fact that at this point in time, I'm not sure if we have the dollar amount nailed down exactly what it's going to cost, what the yearly maintenance is going to cost. We don't have anything but a guesstimate as to the ridership. And also with the Ford plant closing, which is 2,100 workers, I don't know what percentage of those workers they anticipated being on the rail, which, of course, would go into the revenue sharing portion of it. My only concern is not whether we have the rail or not. I'm completely ambivalent on that issue. My issue is do we impose that taxes on the taxpayers of the county not knowing what it is, and do we let someone outside of our county determine what the rate of taxes is going to be that's going to be imposed on them long term, uh, which is forever. And, and that's where the concern is. Um, uh, I'm glad I got the opportunity to clarify that. As it's currently contracts are moving forward, it becomes a, mid, a bit of an unfunded mandate with the concerns of the people that co-sponsored this bill. So your concern is more like a martyr tax in Clayton County? I don't think I want to use the word martyr, sir. Uh, I think I'll address that differently. My concern is the method of funding of the continued operation and maintenance of the rail going through the counties that are affected. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. to make sure that I have a clarification on it, approved by a majority of the qualified voters in such county and municipality. If we're talking multiple municipalities or more than one county and or municipality. Yes, sir. I, I'm, I'm questioning hypothetically, of course. If city, one city voted city, against it yes, and the county voted county for it. Now. You know, I think that's, a, that's probably a flaw in the drafting of this legislation that would need to be addressed in the committee process. I, I do believe that is a flaw. Would yes, you sir. also, if you don't mind further questions. Yes, sir. Would you also um, be opposed to the language say that it must, all municipalities and or counties must vote on the same day that other uh, uh, elections are held and that it's not piecemeal together so as a way to educate the, the people of the particular county and municipality? Mr. Chairman, I think that that would be the will of this committee, and I'm fully willing to do that as well as I'm sure the many co-sponsors on this legislation are. We would want to make it as economical and feasible for the local government as we possibly could and combine it with an already scheduled election, not hold a special election, I think would be the preference, unless a county deemed otherwise. And, Mr. Chairman, if I may, one more. Yes, sir. On the multiple question or, or the question of multiple municipalities and or county, there's a part of me that wonders, let's suppose for the moment, hypothetically, there were four involved and only one voted no. In essence, would that give them veto power? I don't know. I can't answer your question, sir. I don't know. Thank you. 
we probably have lead counsel here today? Nope. We do. Mr. Rusk will probably answer that for you, sir, better than I could. I want to apologize to Rick. I forgot to introduce Rick Ruskell from the yeah, from Legislative Council over there in the corner. Thanks, Rick. Anybody else on the committee have a question or comment? Just a just a point of clarification. Uh, uh, both the study committee and the special subcommittee was both mentioned. I believe are we talking? Would we be uh, creating a subcommittee for this or a study? There's, uh, in your pack, well, as you know, there are six subcommittees, and one of the subcommittees in transportation is the rail subcommittee, so I would ask the will of the committee to let it go to that subcommittee. Uh, Representative Fleming is the chairman of that subcommittee, and I'd ask that it would go there if that's the will of the committee, either that subcommittee or the full committee. I, just from my own thoughts here, from just these few <coughs> minutes today, I think we've been in the meeting 23 minutes. A lot of questions have been answered, asked, some answered and some not. So to me, that tells me that uh, it's something we need to look at. If there are questions out there that we don't know the answers to and how it's going to affect the voters, I personally see that as something that we need to look at. Mr. Chairman, I totally concur with you. We do have a little language cleanup we need to do on this. And with, you know, with the... Uh with the, with the committee agreeing with you, sir, the, the subcommittee would be probably the appropriate place to put it so that we could have a little time for language cleanup, study the issue a little further, and decide what we need to do. Any other comments? Do I hear a motion by someone on the committee? So moved. Is there a second? All right, is there any more discussion now? We understand that we're going to take this bill, House Bill 1033. We'll put it in the House Transportation Subcommittee on Rail. Chairman Fleming, Representative Fleming, and at a point we will notify everyone when we have that meeting. And I ask for all of y'all to continue the discussion on this issue. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk to us. Feel free to call us at any time. We want this to be open. We want to try to have all the questions answered so the citizens back home will be represented well. So, uh, Do I hear a vote on that motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. And all opposed? Ladies and gentlemen, any other business come forward? To Thank you, Mr. Say? Chairman and members of the committee. If there's no other business, this meeting will be adjourned. Thank you, all. Excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, y'all. Wait just a minute. My fault. A very good friend of mine. You see how great a friend she is. Into the committee, uh, what they do for us here in Atlanta and for the state of Georgia. I apologize, Ms. Williams. Thank you, distinguished chairman. You run a meeting like we like to run it. Get out. <laughs> Get out early. And thank you, uh, distinguished members of the committee. Um, I'm very pleased today on behalf of the Community Improvement District Alliance for Metropolitan Atlanta to just give you a few brief minutes of the wonderful public-private partnerships we are incurring for you within the state to help accelerate transportation projects through our self-imposed taxing authority which you have graciously allowed us through legislation. And I have several uh, colleagues here joining me because we have 11 different CID organizations across metropolitan Atlanta. We represent billions of dollars of real estate investment across the city, and we represent thousands and thousands of businesses, as you will, will see. And I'm going to leave a map um, that dictates all the locations of these CID districts uh, for your reference here. But I'd like to recognize my colleagues. Um, we have the executives of the Cumberland CID, Malika Rivers, if she'll stand, and Lainey Shipp, the executive of the Town Center Community Improvement District, and Dave Roselle, who has helped le lead two or three different um, CIDs in Gwinnett County. Uh, we are just pleased to report to you that we had a great year with your leadership last year in the passage of Senate Bill uh, 4 which had wonderful representation from the House on making sure we had congressional balance reform 
and the distribution of funding so that we can match our monies to leverage even higher acceleration of project delivery. And we appreciated that, that wonderful partnership that happened in last legislative session. I want to call on my uh, chairman, Mr. Bob Boyles, who comes from the private sector and chairs the Perimeter Community Improvement Districts in my area, which is Georgia's corporate center, and he's happy to represent our alliance as a volunteer role today. Uh, Mr. Leithead from Cumberland would have liked to have been here, but he is at a memorial service at this very time, and so he apologizes for having to miss. But Mr. Bowles will say a few words, and then we'll take any questions you may have. I'll leave these maps for passage. Thank you. I just had a couple of comments. First off, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee for um, staying uh, uh, for this portion of the hearing. We, we wanted you all to know that um, although the different CIDs compete each, with each other for business opportunities, that um, when it comes to infrastructure issues, and I think all of you on this committee are very much aware of the traffic problems we have in Atlanta, Representative Jordan just eloquently um, stated the problems that they have in Clayton County. Um, we are, if you look at where the CIDs are located around Metro Atlanta, every one of those areas, not just on the north side, on the south side, east and west, are all dealing with the same problem, and that is growth that we've had um, here in Metro. And one of the great things is that um, just uh, the, the leadership that's coming up from the business community knows that even though we compete on some levels that on the issue of infrastructure and funding for that, that we all need to check our guns at the door, so to speak, and come in and work together for these common concerns. And so um, I really want to just thank this committee um, for the work that you all did during the last session um, on helping resolve some of the issues with congressional balancing. And then as we look forward to, um, again, uh, addressing some of the traffic concerns that deals with the primary economic engine for the state of Georgia, and that's Metro Atlanta and the service industry that benefits so many people. Um, we're going to appreciate working uh, with you all to help try and solve some of those funding issues in this session and in the next. So again, um, this is really, we're not asking for anything today. We're just uh, here to thank you and uh, to let you know that we're out here uh, to be good partners with the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, hang on, Mr. Bowles. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Do I have anybody? You may have stated this. How long has this CID been in existence? The CIDs in general have been in existence over, uh, since the 80s in Cumberland um, area. And then our CID at Perimeter was in I'd suggest to the committee members is this is a good resource for us, somebody that we can contact. I know Ms. Williams is always accessible at the Capitol, and I'm sure the rest of y'all are too. So if you have a few minutes to hang around when the committee members leave, if you have a business card, something you can hand to them, it be a good contact for us. And that open communication, we can work together as a group and try to solve some of these traffic problems. So. Any other questions, any other comments by the audience? If I don't hear any, I appreciate you coming. I apologize, Ms. Williams, for almost overlooking her, and thank you for the committee members. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.